What's up, tubers? It is time to go back to basics. Bass Fishing 101. We're on episode two tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about patterns. And since most of us live here in North Texas, uh, at least most of my subscribers, I'm not going to say everybody, uh, but most live in North Texas or East Texas, I'm just going to break down two different lakes for you. Uh, not even two different lakes, really just what I see as far as patterns on these two lakes in our area. Because I think a lot of times it gets a little bit confusing when you're watching people uh, that on YouTube that fish these bigger lakes that have all these different arms and rivers and huge creek arms that come down and make you know gorgeous swings and stuff like that. And a lot of our lakes, being that they're man-made, don't have some of this stuff. So uh, I'd like to break that down for you tonight, kind of show you those patterns, and hopefully, even if you don't fish on Lake Fork or Ray Hubbard, you can at least take this information that you find tonight on the video and apply that towards your lake. So let's jump in. Let's get started. Here we go. So when we talk about patterns, I want to talk to you guys about seasonal patterns, right? So we're going to talk next video about actual patterns, which I broke down a video for you actually already on patterns. Uh, you can click that link up there. It will take you back to that video and talk to you about the different patterns that are out there, at least the patterns that have worked for me. And there's many different patterns that are out there. But what I want to talk to you about right now is really seasonal patterns. And what I mean by that is the movement of fish throughout the seasons. And I think I'm going to probably have some controversy in this video because I look at it just a little bit differently, maybe than some of the stuff that you've seen. And this is just based on, you know, just the years I've had out there on the lake fishing around and, and just my personal opinion. I don't think that they're wrong at all. I think there's always fish pretty much everywhere. I think it's just the majority of the fish that we're talking about. So even if I say, look, they're not in the back of the coves in late in the middle of summer, and then you go out there and you catch a five pounder in the back of the cove, you know, you're going to think I'm an idiot. And so I don't want you to think that there's fish everywhere. All I'm going to do here is talk to you about where the high percentage areas are. So maybe instead of having a one in 15 chance of catching that fish because you were in the back of the cove, you go up more towards the front where the main lake point is in the summer, a little bit deeper. And now you've just increased your odds by 30 or 40 percent. So that's really what I'm talking about here. But just remember, pretty much if you can find cover, you can find fish almost anywhere. And so let's talk about first off my kind of personal opinion on the different season or seasonal patterns that the fish have. So we're going to start off in winter. So that's going to be for us, you know, December, kind of December all the way into January, and then really kind of leading in about mid February. So that's the winter time. So we'll talk about that pattern here in a second. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be pre-spawn. So you're going to see me go to pre-spawn and then straight from pre-spawn, I'm going to go to post-spawn. You're going to say, well, what about spawn? Well, I don't really like fishing for the fish when they're actually spawning. So what I like to do is target them either when they're in pre-spawn or post-spawn. And the good news is, is it's just like I was telling you about earlier, fish are everywhere, right? So fish also spawn in a lot of different stages. So the big girls, they might come in right there at the end of January, early February. And then you might have another set, uh, you know, that's not as big that comes in just a couple weeks later. And then they continue that rotation all the way through until, you know, possibly even May, depending on where you're at. So the pre-spawn and the post-spawn, you got to remember that they're, they're going to be in transition a lot during that time. So you can catch them either way. Um, it just depends on how they're, how they're setting up. So the next one is going to be the early summer bite. So I'm going to talk to you guys about that, where to find them kind of early summer and summertime. And then we're going to talk about late summer, which is the hard time to find them. So we'll talk about late summer as well. And then we're going to finish off. We're going to talk about the fall bite. The fall bite is one of my favorite bites. So I want to talk to you guys about that and talk to you about where you can pretty much locate them in the middle of fall. So with those six things that we just went over, let's jump in and let's talk about wintertime fishing and where we can find these fish. As I mentioned, I was going to use Ray Hubbard for an example for you guys when we go over these different seasons. So we're going to start off in the wintertime. And I told you it's also going to be a little bit controversial just because you have to remember, guys, we're fishing on lakes that don't have big coves and stuff like that. So that's really what I'm referring to when I'm talking about this wintertime fishing. Now, if your lake is like Table Rock or something, going to be a whole lot different. And I think you'll, you'll be able to relate to that more when we talk about Lake Ford. Um, but in the wintertime, pretty much anywhere you go, 
those fish are going to pull out, right? So when I'm talking about the winter time, I'm basically talking about December through about end of January, maybe mid February, just depending on where our, our temps are. Once that water temperature gets up above 55, the game changes. Um, when it's 55 or below, that's pretty much going to be what I would consider to be winter time. So in the winter time, the thing that you really need to look at is you need to look for areas where the water could possibly be heated up. So that could be discharge from power plants, stuff like that. Also, riprap. Riprap is huge in the wintertime, and you guys have probably seen it on videos and things like that. And if you haven't, basically the sun heats up the rocks, the rocks heat up the water. Um, so that's about as simple as I can, I can make it. So when those rocks heat up the water, the bait fish will come into it because they're attracted to the warmer water. And then you know what happens when the bait fish comes in that immediately brings the bass in. So you really need to focus on the riprap in the wintertime. So go out and get a medium diving crankbait, one that runs about, you know, six to 10 feet, pound it off that riprap and you're gonna get some pretty good bites. Um, and then also you, you can throw lipless crankbaits. Lipless crankbaits work really, really well in the wintertime. So get you one that's red and then also get you one that looks like a minnow color and just go out there and just throw it around because a lot of these fish, even though uh, they're up towards the rock where it's warmer. They're still going to suspend a lot in the wintertime. They're also going to go out over the deep water and suspend out there as well. So I'll talk to you guys about that here in a second on how we approach those. But wintertime can be really tough fishing. But if you stick to the riprap, especially on this lake for Ray Hubbard, stick to the riprap around 30, uh, go down by the, by the dam and fish that. Fish over here by the power plant as well. You got some additional riprap back in here in these areas so you've got multiple areas you could go fish the riprap and 66 will also produce as well so you could always go over 66 and fish that riprap so we have plenty of riprap in ray hubbard to fish so really if you just focus on that this winter and got really good at fishing riprap i think it would change the game for you on uh, on ray hubbard so now if we're talking other lakes as i mentioned these fish in the wintertime, they like to pull back, right? So they, they like to pull back and go deep and pretty much they're lethargic and don't like to bite. So they're they're kind of hard to catch. Actually, they're really hard to catch. So a couple ways you, you can catch them. Obviously, you could throw a spoon out there and catch them if they're, if they're suspending. Um, and that takes a little bit of time and you got to get really good with your graphs and stuff like that to really get good at catching um, suspended fish. The other thing you could throw is jerk baits. So get you a a deep diving jerk bait, like a mega bass 110 plus two, I think it is. And that's a that's a really deep diving crankbait or jerk bait. You could throw it out there and just suspend it. You could throw that on the rip wrap too, and that works really good. The thing that we like to do in the wintertime is we like to throw A rigs. Um, and it actually starts, the A rig thing starts actually in the fall. So we'll all, you'll hear me talk about the A-Rig in the fall, but just to warn you really quick, especially if you're a beginner and you're watching this video, do not go out and buy an A-Rig right now, because if you do that and you put it on your 7.3 medium heavy or your 7 medium, it's going to, it's going to just feel really awkward. It's not going to work. You're probably going to lose your A-Rig. You probably don't have the right line or the right rods or anything. So fishing, unfortunately, is just like everything else. You've got to have the right tools to throw some of these things. And the A-Rig is one of those things that specifically you have to have the right setup in order to be successful with it. But if you do, A-Rigs are great in the fall and they're something that I always have on in the winter. And so what we'll focus on with those A-Rigs in the winter is we'll go out to the bridge pillars and we'll just hit all of the bridge pillars with those A-Rigs and we have a lot of success doing that. Also going around the break walls in the marinas. So any of the marinas that have the concrete where it's gonna heat up a lot, you're gonna fish all of those things in the winter time. I think you're gonna have a lot of success there. If you're out on fork, obviously you could go out a little bit deeper. You could fish bridge pillars um, and you could also find riprap out there. There's not as much out on fork. Um, and then you could also just go out deeper and see if you can find them on brush piles and things like that, or just find them suspending maybe over on creek channels and stuff like that. So lots of different options that you would have. But for those of you that fish uh, Hubbard and kind of these DFW area lakes, definitely go hit that riprap and go hit those bridge pillars in the wintertime. You're going to have some success. Now, let's talk about what happens when the water moves up over 55 and we're ready to get into some pre-spawn action. So it is time to talk pre-spawn at the time of year when you have a chance to catch one of the biggest fish of your life. So we talked last time about wintertime, right? And how they'd be out deep around riprap and rock and bridge pillars and deep in creek channels, um, just pretty much further out into the main lake. And so 
a lot of times, you know, you're going to see some videos on YouTube and things like that, where they're going to talk about the seasonal patterns. And they're basically going to say up here is you're going to be your spawn. And then they're going to say maybe this midsection is your pre-spawn, post-spawn. And then your, your last section is kind of your winter and summer haunts, which is, which is right. Definitely. And you are going to have some fish that actually travel from the very back of that creek all the way back out to the main lake. But you're also going to have a lot of fish that stay somewhat resident in certain areas. And so what I try to do, instead of trying to break down maybe an entire creek arm like Little Caney, instead of doing that, try to break down just little sections and then try to learn those sections and then build your way up until where you can get a lot better. So one of the, the best sections I think here at Little Caney is right here around um, this island that's out there. And I think this is where, this is where Lee Livesay won the tournament out there. Um, but if you look at it, it's got a pretty good setup. So you've got a really good creek channel that's coming right through here, right? And then you've also got creek beds that run back through here and then another one back through here. So I think this is a really good example to show you guys uh, some transitional patterns that they're going to follow throughout the season. So one, you've got uh, you got your winter time, which we talked about, right? They're going to be out here off in this creek channel. If, if I was fishing in this area in the winter time, I'd probably focus a lot right in here and just see if I can find some activity here. Now, once the winter time's over, then we start getting into pre-spawn. So instead of them being out here off the main lake point in the creek bed, what they're going to do is they're going to start to make their migration back into these coves and pockets and things like that, especially the coves and and creek the coves that have creek beds and creek channels in them and stuff like that so if there's a creek in that cove that's definitely the place where you want to go and try to kind of follow it back and see if you can find some spawning areas but in this case we've really got two that i want to show you here so let's just follow these creek beds and um, now if you know anything about creek beds and creek channels um, basically they're highways for the bass so the bass will basically just set up on these and they'll travel down these creek beds and these creek channels, the majority of them will just use that as kind of their highway, just like we do as humans. Um, but there's always that stray cat that decides that he didn't want to take the highway because the highway is just what everybody else does. And he wants to go off and go off-roading and, you know, do something totally different. Um, that's fine too. Bass do that as well. So you're going to have some of those fish that are just in random spots for no reason, no rhyme or reason. Typically it's just some kind of cover that they're relating to. And then you're going to have this other majority of the fish that are actually going to use these creek beds and these creek channels as highways. And they're going to have stopping spots on these highways to stop and feed up and rest and things like that. So I know I keep rambling on, but in pre-spawn, what we're looking at is secondary points. So if I'm, if I'm saying this is their main highway and they're coming in here and they say, okay, it's time to start the spawn. Where are we going to go next? Well, they're going to come in here and they're going to follow this creek bed until they get to their first stopping spot. So their first stopping spot might be right here, right? This could be a really good area for them to set up in pre-spawn. Another good spot for them, maybe, maybe they come up and they, they go past that main lake point and then they start heading off to come over here for pre-spawn, right? So they could come off in this main, main area, come down this creek bed. They may stop right here at this submerged culvert. They may come in here and stop right here off of this little ledge or break that's right in here. They may even come up in here the next week and you might find them right in here. So really what we're looking for when it comes to pre-spawn is we're looking for secondary points. Secondary points or drop-offs and ledges that are leading back into spawning coves. Also standing timber, if you can find some standing timber in those areas that are leading back into those spawning areas, those are always great areas to fish as well. Now, as far as the baits go for pre-spawn, um, still going with the A-Rig, you know, I'm still going to be throwing that. Probably the kind of the last season that I would be throwing the A-Rig in would be that pre-spawn area. Uh, definitely the red rattle trap, I'll be firing that thing like crazy. Swim baits, moving baits, pretty much anything that moves and makes a lot of action, that's what I'm going to be throwing. So this is the time of year that I'm going to start throwing the bigger stuff. Um, and the more moving baits. So I'm gonna kind of go away from that slow stuff, the shaky heads, the worms and all of that. And I'm gonna get into more moving baits. And I'm pretty much gonna stick with those moving baits until the water starts getting uh, quite a bit warmer. Now, in pre-spawn, you can still catch giants on football jigs and things like that. But here's what I would suggest. I would suggest you go and you hit these secondary points to try to find them with moving baits. Once you get a bite, fish that area thoroughly and then go back and hit it with something slow like a jig 
or a Texas rib worm or something like that and see what else you can pick up. But for the most part, that movement bait is really gonna give you a lot of good bites. So what I want you to focus on when it comes to pre-spawn is I want you to get your lake out, whatever lake it is that you have, and I want you to take that lake and mark where all your creek channels and your creek beds are. So maybe just even do a screen print if you want, and then just highlight the areas where those beds are. By you doing that, now you're gonna have a good idea of, okay, this is the highways that the bass take, and they're all gonna take their different highways and their different routes. But once you get that, then you just match that to your main lake points, your secondary points, and your shallow flats in the back, and you pretty much got a good understanding of the migration path that these fish are gonna take. So we talked about uh, winter time, and then we talked about getting up over 55 degrees, we're getting into pre-spawn, some of them are probably already spawning. Now we need to talk about post-spawn. So let's go on and let's move on and let's talk about post-spawn next, here we go. It's post-spawn time. So I'm sure that all of you guys are sitting there saying, wait a second, Tyler, I thought you went pre-spawn, then you went post-spawn. What happened to spawn? Well, I talked to you guys about it earlier. I'm just not really a huge fan of going and fishing for the fish when they're on beds. So if they're on the beds, I'd rather fish for them when they come off the beds or right before they go into the beds, but I really don't like messing with them when they're in the spawn. Now, do I have a, uh, a problem with people that do that? Absolutely not. That's what you want to do. Go for it, man. Whatever toots your horn. Have I done it before? Absolutely. It's tons of fun uh, for sure. But I think just as I've gotten older, I've just got a little bit more um, just kind of tied in my own ways. And I just feel like, you know, that's one time when I get to fish for these guys all year long. Um, they give me plenty of enjoyment and things like that. And that's one time where I really just feel like they need to be left alone. So out of my respect for the fish, uh, I just back off of them and try not to fish for them in the spawn. But again, have no issue with you if you want to do that. If you do, there's lots of good videos out there on YouTube that'll teach you how to do that. Um, just go out, check them out, you know, fishing for the spawn. I'm sure you'll find some good stuff. So let's talk about post-spawn. All right, so on post-spawn, really, it's the same exact thing, right? It's the same thing as pre-spawn. The only difference is now they're maybe not as aggressive when they first come off that bed. They're gonna be a little lethargic, so you're gonna have to slow down. But then once, you know, a week passes or so, they're gonna get back to being aggressive again. They're gonna start feeding up again. So pre-spawn and post-spawn essentially are the same things. You're just catching them either right before they go in or when they're coming out. So, you know, we talked about the spot on Lake Fork and I'm going to go back to Hubbard too and show you guys that because Hubbard's totally different than a, a real lake like Lake Fork is. So we talked about Lake Fork and we talked about, let's say if they went back in here and they did their spawning, where are they going to be post-spawn? Well, post-spawn, their first place they're going to pull out to is probably going to be maybe right in here, right? So this would be your post-spawn area, just like it would be your pre-spawn. This might be the last place they stop in pre-spawn before they move back into the uh, to the cove to do their to do their spawning or even if they're maybe they're going to spawn back in here maybe this is their last stop or here so you just never really know but if you're understanding those creek beds and those creek channels it's really going to help you so um anyways i don't have a lot to show you here because pre-spawn and post-spawn once you get it once you get pre-spawn you've got post-spawn um, lures are pretty much the same. You're going to get away from that red rattle trap. You're going to get more into spinner baits and things like that, um, you know, on the post spawn. But essentially, just throwing your moving baits and having a good time, throwing your top waters now are going to start coming into effect. So you're going to have to start having some good times then. And, and we'll go over all this stuff as we get into these seasons. So we're eventually going to get to summer here in a minute. And then once we get to that, I'll actually, you'll actually be able to follow me along through the seasons and watch us fish these different uh, techniques and things like that. But for the most part, let's just keep it simple. Pre-spawn and post-spawn, pretty much the same thing. You're looking for them on secondary points coming off of the spawning flats or going into the spawning flats. So before I move on, I wanna show you Hubbard because I talked to you earlier about Lake Fort being a real lake. And then we've got this, our lake, uh, my home lake, which is Hubbard, which is uh, just a reservoir, man-made reservoir. And it's hard to figure out these patterns here. I really struggled with this lake when I first moved here because I just couldn't figure out the patterns. The patterns weren't as obvious um, as maybe like a Lake Fork or something like that. So on Hubbard, I call this Money Cove. And on Hubbard, what they'll do is there's pretty much 
there's not a lot of difference here, right? So you're, you got to catch them at the right time. And once you do, and you know, they're in there, you can just pound the heck out of them and then they're gone. Like they're literally gone like the next day. So on Hubbard, they're going to come out here on this Creek bed and they'll be traveling in here through the winter time. They're somewhere out here, suspended, chasing bait fish, all that good stuff. Come post spawn or sorry, come pre spawn. They'll start setting up right in here, right? Especially right here around this edge where this Creek bed is. So they'll set up here. And then they, they'll set up over here off of this point as well, this little secondary point right here. And they'll do that for a few weeks and then they'll be back here spawning. And they'll spawn back in here. They'll spawn back in there as well, farther back in that cove. And then as soon as they're done spawning, guess where they go? They go right back to exactly that secondary point right in here or they'll set up right in here and then boom, they're gone just that fast. So it's a very short window that they're gonna come in there. It only happens with, you know, I would say maybe two to three months. And there's only about a month there where you can get some really big fish that come in there. And then the rest of the time they're smaller fish, but it literally happens really, really fast. It, it's gonna start happening about mid-February to March. And then it's probably over by the beginning of May. So it happens really, really fast. But if you catch those areas at the right time and you focus on those secondary points that are in there, it's really good. You'll find the same thing um, in the pre-spawn and the post-spawn when you're fishing over here in, uh, in Rush Creek. So they'll be pretty much, they'll, they'll set up here in the wintertime, right? And then there's not much for them to go to from a secondary points standpoint in this area, which is, I think is why I don't find them setting up on secondary points in Rush Creek. It just, for whatever reason, I just can't find them. I thought for sure I'd find them right here off of this area right in here. And I just can't seem to find them there, but it seems like what they do is they set up here or they set up up here. And then as soon as they're ready to go, they may stop right here for a day or so. And then after that, they're just like full on, they go past this flooded timber and stuff and they get pretty much back in here, they get in these pockets and they get all in this grass and stuff like that. So the pattern is a little bit different. It's, it seems like it's maybe a little bit more aggressive. It's like I'm either outside on the main lake or I'm all the way back in the back of the coves and they don't seem to, to really have that in between. But it could be um, one that maybe I just haven't found them at the right time in the right place. Um, or two, it could just be because it's so um, so shallow, it just doesn't go very deep as far as a cove going far, farther back there that that's why we don't see those patterns. But anyways, wanted to share that with you guys, a little insight on Hubbard. So we've talked about wintertime, we've talked about pre-spawn, we've talked about post-spawn, and we talked a little bit about spawns, kind of skipped over that one. Now we're going to get into really early summer and summertime fishing. So let's jump over there. Let's talk about that. That's when things start getting fun. Um, they've already became fun. Obviously, as soon as we got into pre-spawn, started getting good. But summertime could be a really fun time to fish as well. So let's talk about that. So to me, summertime really has two different phases. There's the early summer and then it kind of starts transitioning off and then you get into late summer. We're in late summer right now. It's, it's August uh, 25th as we're recording this video. But um, if we're talking summertime, let's talk two different kind of phases. So early summer is awesome. So early summer, there's one thing that you need to throw on that is a deep diving crankbait. And deep diving crankbaits are money in the early summertime when the fish first start pulling out, right? So we talked about um, going out, let's, let's, let's just take a look at Lake Fork right here. So I, I put a, this is a community hole. Everybody knows it's a community hole. I call it the community hump of Fork. Um, but this is a great place to find some deep dive and crankbait fish, right? So probably what they do, my guess would be they come back in here and spawn. And then they, they hit these points, like we talked about, these secondary points, like probably right in here. And then they may come out and set up somewhere off this ledge, possibly and then they'll move out here and then they'll set up around this hump and around this big creek channel that's out here. And so it's a great place to do some deep diving uh, crankbaits. So if it's in summertime, you definitely want to go out and do some deep dive, deep diving crankbaits. So just go out there, get you some deep diving crankbaits, pound that thing against the bottom, against the little ledges and the humps and things like that. And you're going to have a lot of success. And then all of a sudden, one day you're going to go out there and that bite is just going to shut off and you're going to be like what the heck like that was the most fun bite ever it only lasts like two or three weeks and now it's gone 
Um, and I really think a lot of that is, is pressure, um, but it just kind of, for whatever reason, maybe it's not pressure, maybe it's something else, maybe they just get smarter, but whatever reason, it just kind of breaks up. And then when, so when that crankbait bite breaks up and you stop getting all those bites, that's when it's time to really start focusing on your Carolina rigs, your wobble heads, your Texas rig worms, all of your slower stuff, your, your big football head jigs, stuff like that. So, uh, so try that out as a summertime pattern. I think that's really going to help you. you know, and, and Hubbard's the same way. If we go out here and look at Hubbard, let's switch over and let's go over here to, uh, to Hubbard. You know, let's say that we're fishing summertime on Hubbard. Well, if I'm fishing summertime on Hubbard, let's let's go look over here by. Well, it says Bayside. We know it's not Bayside anymore. Right now, it's nothing because it's all shut down. But let's say they're back in here spawning, right? So they're, they're back in here and they're spawning. And then now they need to go somewhere, right? They can probably go deep and just suspend underneath these docks and things like that. Or what they might do is travel over here and come off these little ledges. So there's a nice little feeding table up here that they could feed on and they could hang out around this ledge around the deeper water. They could also hang out off the ledge of this little point right in here or off the edge of this little point right in here as well. So just some ideas to think about, you know, some things in the summertime, definitely in the summertime, you want to go out deep, you want to find your drop offs, your ledges, um, and you want to start working those pretty good. And then you also want to look for brush piles. So when it starts getting even hotter, you know, those, those brush piles that are a little bit deeper before the thermocline sets in, really focus on those. Those offshore brush piles can be awesome. Uh, to fish until they get worked over too hard then you got to go find something else but offshore brush piles offshore rock piles humps those are all great things to uh to fish around uh, at least in our area lakes uh, you know that seem to really work and then obviously you know always focus on the creek channels you can always go out the creek channels and focus on those bins and catch some pretty good fish out there as well but that's all good summertime stuff so finally we kind of get into this late summer right so We've had the, the joy of the crankbait fishing. We got the 10 inch worms out, we busted some fish doing that. We did the Carolina rig fishing. And then we get into this late summertime, which is kind of where I'm at right now. You know, it's, it's August, late August. It's, it's really, really hot. The water's really, really hot. Um, the nights are finally starting to change a little bit, but, but right now we're kind of in that transition. So when we get in that transition area, it seems like that offshore bite kind of goes away and, and for whatever reason it just it just doesn't seem to exist much i mean you get a few bites here and there but um you won't get anything too crazy but then you know you might get lucky and get on some offshore fish that where you can still bust them up so i'm not saying don't go offshore at this time of year i'm just saying it seems like it gets a little bit harder so when it starts getting a little bit harder a couple things that i do is i'll either go up in the river and try to find the shade so i'm really looking for any kind of shade i can find the cooler water give me some current uh, things like that, you know, get some more oxygen in the water. I might even go back in the back if I'm on a, a bigger lake. I'll go back where the bigger creek systems come in, where there's oxygen coming in and fish in those areas. Um, that's always a good area to fish as well. So really what I'm looking for when it comes to really late summer is I'm looking for areas where there's oxygen pumping into the water um, or I'm looking over in docks and marinas. So I'll kind of switch that pattern and all of a sudden now I'm on a dock pattern. Um, and I'm really just focusing on the shade areas around the docks and the marinas and things like that. And that seems to have worked pretty good for me, but I'll be honest, you know, when we get into this time of year, this is probably one of the tougher times of year uh, for me to fish. This and the, uh, the winter time are two of the toughest times to fish. And then as soon as like September gets here, here in about a week, things are gonna just totally turn around a week or two weeks and everything's gonna change to start becoming really awesome again. So that takes us in to fall. So that's what we're going to talk about next. Stick around. We're almost done. Here we go. So you made it. We've made it to the final section. Hopefully you guys have learned some things today on fires, the patterns and where you can kind of find fish. Look, I'm definitely no expert. Uh, you know, if you want an expert, go out, hire a guide, have them kind of teach you the lake. This is just my knowledge that I've, uh, I've gained throughout the years. So we're going to talk a little bit deeper as we get into more of these beginner videos about shad spawn which we didn't talk about which is awesome also the uh, the brim spawn or the perch spawn um, that's always an awesome place to look at so there's a lot more deeper patterns or patterns inside of these patterns that we're going to dig into but for this video i just wanted to stay as high level as i could to kind of show you the general areas of the lake that you need to be fishing so let's jump in and let's talk about fall so we've got that transition going on that we just talked about it's been really really hot 
right? We're focusing on docks and marinas. We're going to stay on that for a little bit until the nights really start to get cooler. So once the, the daytime temperatures will stay pretty, pretty steady, but the nights will start to get a lot cooler. So start paying attention to the cooler nights. And once that happens, that means the fish are just going to turn into fish eating machines and they're going to be chasing shad like crazy. Now, fall can be a little bit tricky because they're all over the place. Like they can be super, super shallow. They can be backs in the back of coves. They can be backs in creek beds. It's wherever they can pin the shad. They'll pin them up in all kinds of places and then they'll just gorge on them. And if you can find one of those places where they've got them pinned, you can have a heyday back there. So the main thing in the fall is to switch over, get you on some swim baits. Uh, Alabama rigs are good during this time as well. Um, pretty much any type of big moving bait, uh, spinner baits, things like that. And what you're looking for, I think, at least what I've had a lot of success for is, yes, you can go in the backs of the coves and catch them there and things like that. But if you want to catch those bigger girls that are out there feeding, you really want to go out and look at main lake points that have, they're, they're really long, right? They stick out and they basically have a tabletop on the top of them, or what I call a tabletop or a flat spot. So I picked this spot on, on a Lake Fork because it has three really good spots that I think would be decent spots to fish in the fall or at least good areas to go look for fish in the fall. So this is up in Little Caney again and I just picked these three little points because I think this does a really good job of showing you what we're looking for. So right here you can see you've got a long, t a long point, right, flat point that sticks out. It's fairly close to a creek channel but it sticks out but it's got that nice flat top on the top of it. We're going to find the same thing right here. We've got a point with a nice flat top. Over here, the same thing, a point, a long tapering point with a good, pretty good flat top on it. So that's what you're gonna be looking for in the fall if you really wanna get into some good fishing and get into those schools of fish that are feeding. But you can also go back in the backs of the coves. You can still do your docks pattern. Um, they're pretty much everywhere. The key to, uh, to fall for me is you gotta keep moving. Just keep moving around and you'll find them. And once you find them, it's gonna be fun. Um, and finding those schools of them that are feeding are just crazy, crazy fun. And Fork is one of those places where you can see that happen. Now, if we're switching over and we're talking about Ray Hubbard in the fall, that's going to be a little bit different, right? Because we don't have really the things that Fork and all of them have as part of their legs. We pretty much got these bowls with no, no real good coves or creek channels and things like that. But let's, let's look here, right here, and let's go up Yankee Creek. So Yankee Creek is a a pretty good example of where we can find something similar to what we're looking for. So if we look out here off of Terry Park, right here off the edge of it, we do have a little bit of a flat top that's right over here, right? Right in this area. And sorry, this, this image isn't loading correctly uh, for whatever reason. So let me back out. So we've got a little bit of a flat top that's right there. So somewhat of a long tapering point, <clears throat> at least long for, uh, for Hubbard. And then what you'll see is they'll set up over here as well. So they'll set up out here. This is a main lake point too. We don't really have that tapering point, but they'll still set up out here around this creek channel. And then they'll get back in here and they'll push bait back into this cove as well uh, and do some feeding back in there. So really any of those areas right in there in the fall are good. Uh, fishing around the rip wraps good in the fall as well. Um, you definitely want to bust out your rattle traps in the fall and just go crazy with them. Just cover water like crazy and have a heyday because it's one of the easiest times uh, to catch fish for sure. And you can still catch some pretty good fish in the fall as well. So um, just a quick review. So if we're talking winter time, they're going to be deeper, right? We're talking pre-spawn and post-spawn. I want you to go in you look at your secondary points. Um, and kind of follow them in from the main lake point into the secondary point. So follow them in. And then after post spawn, they're going to pull back out to more of those main lake points, uh, those brush piles, those humps, those big creek channels that swing and stuff like that. Those are all the types of things you want to look for uh, summertime. And then come late summer, you know, look at your docks, your marinas, your shade, uh, your oxygen levels. And then come fall, you're back onto those main lake points again, and you're looking for the flat tops to do all the feeding. So if you kind of follow that little pattern, that's kind of my little magical book of, of following the fish. I'm no expert again, but hey, you know, we've, we've had some, definitely had some success in local tournaments and things like that. And we've been on the water a lot. So hopefully you guys can learn from us. Hey, until next time, I uh, hope you catch your PB. Also, the next video that we're going to do 
uh, for Bass Fishing 101, it's time to start talking a little bit of tackle and gear and stuff like that. So I've showed you guys now where to find the fish, or at least the areas to locate the fish depending on the season. Let's start talking about some gear and things like that and get you out on the water. Here we go. All right, talk to you next time. Hope you catch your PB.